Hey everybody, it is Quickend and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be answering personal questions about tattooing. It's been a little while since I've done a Q&A on my channel. It used to be something I would do a lot. Today I just wanted to kind of do a Q&A and just connect with you guys. Um, I've been really proud of the work I've been doing on YouTube, although a lot of it is planned and loosely scripted and stuff like that. You know, some of it's like research heavy and stuff. My channel was built on answering questions and using my experience as a tattooed person to just share what I know. So today I wanted to do that. Is this light a little distracting? So I asked you guys on Twitter and Instagram to ask me some questions. If you don't follow me on Twitter or Instagram, my handle is quietcoolkid. So I wanted to get started, jump right in. So I've been getting this question a lot, I guess because of COVID and I wanted to answer it for sure. And it's how often do you message somebody to set up an appointment when they're not responding? So I think with, what is it called? Coronavirus with a global pandemic, different states and different countries, I guess, are opening tattoo shops back up. And I've gotten a few messages from people that I've either tried to answer in depth or really I just don't know because in my state in Pennsylvania we're still pretty locked up but my uncle came to visit from Texas and I found out that in Texas like it everything's go anything goes so we actually all went to like Panera Bread together and they went to sit down in the lobby and I was like oh no we have to like call Panera order it online play pay online get it and then leave like that's what's happening in PA. So I don't have like a, you know, I don't really have an answer, but for me, I think if you are either, you have half finished work done or you had an appointment and it got canceled, I think right now it's best to just maybe wait and wait a little while. Maybe follow your tattoo artist on social. I know I follow Black Rabbit Tattoo Shop and they are in Virginia, which is opening. So I've kind of been watching them go through the motions and they are currently appointment only and only contacting people that have unfinished work. So I think tattoo shops are going to like roll out different procedures. And I think if you are patient and you don't mind waiting, just playing it by ear, I would almost, I think honestly, I would wait up to six months to a year I think for things to get back to normal. That's what I would personally do, but I would expect at least six months or a year, like rough estimate to either hear from your tattoo artist or expect any sort of like mm, rescheduling, but that's just like what I think. What are your thoughts on Ink Master? So last week I posted a video all about the first three tattoo reality TV shows, Miami Ink, LA Ink, and New York Ink. And I sat down and watched, I spent the last month watching like all of them to as much as I could, to capacity. One, it took that whole month to watch all of those shows and sometimes they get kind of cheesy and stuff like that. But also, you know, being a tattooed lady, it's kind of fun to watch a show that like, is about my interest. You know, there's not many. Well, flea market flip. I have never really watched Ink Masters. I've caught Ink Masters. I think maybe the first season I probably watched, but there is so much Ink Masters, like so, 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 so much. I really have not watched the majority of it. A lot of people asked for the Ink Masters video and I haven't really seen it and I'm very intimidated by the library ahead of me. So what I think of Ink Masters, for me, it's just not like how I would gauge the skill set of a tattoo artist. I can tell what tattoo artists are good at on the show. And for me, I've always leaned towards traditional tattoos. It's the tattoos I wear. I think having tattoo artists have to do a bunch of stuff See, so I don't know. I guess it's a show that shows you how well, well-rounded a tattoo artist could potentially be, but I would look for, in my personal life, a tattoo artist who is good at the thing I want. So I think 
probably a good reality TV show. I don't know. Um, of course, I've looked into getting tattooed on Ink Master, and seems like seems like kind of a cool collectible, I guess. But I would love to watch it like live with you guys if that's somehow a thing to do. I would love to do that, but I don't know about watching all of it to do a, a video. I mean, I would. Maybe I could just tackle one season. Let me know what you guys think. So, is it better to have spontaneous or long-term planned tattoo experiences? So, I think a question like that is, it really depends on the person. For me, I did get spontaneous tattoos at first. My, my most personal preference is I like the way a lot of tattoos look. I think that like, one or two tattoos are cool. But if you know that you want to get a lot of tattoos, it's good to keep that in mind because if you just like, for example, off the top of the head, I know a lot of people who when they were, you know, under 18, got like a quote on their wrist and then later had to incorporate that quote into a sleeve and that was difficult. So for me, when I was younger, I really wanted a quote on my wrist. I really wanted this two shell pass on my wrist. And now I think if I would have gotten that, I would have either had to have had removal or I wouldn't have had, you know, room for this. And this is so pleasing to me. These drops and the tail and the little swirl, like that is so pleasing to me that I'm happy that I knew early on I wanted to be covered. Not initially though. So I do have tattoos that are almost like bumpers in the way. So I think spontaneous is good, but as I got older, the spontaneous tattoos I got when I was younger made things more difficult when I got older. So I think planning is good, but spontaneous can also be fun once you've had a lot of tattoos and all you have left are just like room for little, little doodads. A spontaneous doodad, that's cool. But that's just my idea of what you might mean by spontaneous because I've gone with people who got their hands tattooed and it looks really good to this day, but they only had the idea for a couple hours. But they knew they wanted their hands tattooed and when the idea came to them, they were ready for it. So that could also be spontaneous, but it feels, per it feels planned because they always knew. What are your thoughts on tattoo artists having ownership of their tattoos versus the tattoo recipient? I've had a lot of thoughts about this, so it's probably not great that I'm just going to answer it quickly in a video. But I'd love to just put my thoughts out there and maybe encourage a discussion, maybe in the comments or something. But I have mixed feelings about tattoo artists kind of claiming ownership over a tattoo once it's done. Because maybe, maybe it's because I caught the beginning of tattoos and social media, so I have a little bit of experience of, uh, with tattoos before social media, but I think the basics of tattooing or even watching it on Miami Ink, I'm sorry I'm in quarantine. <laughs> Those tattoos back then, they belonged to the person and once they walked out the door, the tattoo artist never saw them again. So in that, I feel like they hopefully put their best work forward and then that was it. The tattoo walked out the door. If it was a client they hated, they forgot all about them. If it was a tattoo they particularly liked, they gave them their business card, you know, maybe took a picture on the shop camera to put in their like portfolio book. When you would walk into shops, there would be portfolio books. Now I think that although you can say like, I did that tattoo, I think with social media, it's almost like, this is something I kind of felt in haircutting too. I felt like maybe sometimes people wanted to just come in and get a haircut and no, no pictures. I just came here for the haircut and now I want to go. But the stylist who gave you that haircut did a particularly good job and practiced their craft and they're proud of it. And they want to take a picture of their haircut to put on their social media so someone else can see that haircut and come in and the process continues. Because of that, I feel both ways because I'm also very tired <laughs> and maybe I don't want to be on somebody's Instagram if I just get my hair done. I'm not sure. I feel both ways. 
I feel like the person who took the haircut who wants to take the picture and I also feel like the client who maybe doesn't want their picture taken, doesn't want to go on social media, someone else's social media where they feel defenseless. We've all been on Spencer's Instagram account. It's tough. So as far as that goes, um, I am I am conflicted about it. There was a local tattoo artist who had took a picture of a girl, of a girl's tattoo. And in the picture, you could see some of the girl's body and the comments just made fun of the girl. And the tattoo artist didn't defend her at all. And he didn't delete any of the comments. He didn't even make like a blanket statement like, I don't want any hate. And I don't go to that shop. I don't respect that artist. And I feel like he threw that girl to the wolves. And I don't know. I feel weird about that. I don't like that. So I think that there are different situations, but if your artist asks, can I take a picture of this? I feel like you give them ownership of the photograph. So it's always gonna be your tattoo, but they took the picture of the tattoo and almost like a selfie, like that's their picture. I saw another question that was like, how do you feel like tattoo? How do you feel if your tattoo is in commercial work? And I've had this discussion with my tattoo artist who I know is chill, so it would be up to him. Like when I was in Inked Magazine, they used the worst picture of me ever, but they took a ton of pictures of me, which took, which looked at all of my tattoos. And they didn't ask me who these tattoo artists were or anything. They didn't have me sign any waivers like that. So I think it really depends on the commercial work you're in and how your tattoo artist, artists feel about it. If any of my tattoo artists went after Ink Magazine, <laughs> whatever. But that personally didn't happen to me. But yeah, I mean, if for some reason I gained some sort of notoriety and a picture of my back was taken, I would want my tattoo artist to have that notoriety. But I have a good relationship with him, so it, it must be tough. But then again, if one of my artists did feel a type of way about me being in Inked Magazine and wished I would have shouted them out or wished that Inked would have contacted them. I also understand that as well, because that's that could be a big chance for you. I don't know. I think I would only feel a type of way about it, though, if the artist was a dick. <laughs> they were a dick. I don't know. But I, everyone I get tattooed by is really chill. I share a meal with any person who's ever tattooed me, so it must really depend. I've seen situations where it's pretty insane and they're all case by case, I think. Are tattoo shops starting to open up in your area and are you comfortable getting work done? Um, tattoo shops are opening in my area next month. And I'm really conflicted as I think most of us are because um, I've been around tattoos and have been getting tattoos for, you know, 15 years. So I really feel for the people who have been out of work for, you know, months and have no income and, you know, tattoo artists are basically like, you know, they could be like gig, gig workers. They kind of work on commission. So there's not a lot of fail saves for tattoo artists. So in that, I want tattoo artists to be able to go back to work so they can have money in their pockets. Um, but I also feel pretty scared for any tattoo artist or any person really who's going to work before they're ready because they are financially dependent. I think a lot of us feel conflictions about that. It's really tough. And yeah, I don't, I don't know how I feel. In Philly, restaurants have been open, but only if they have outside seating. If not, you have to get takeout. So some outside seating places have been open, I think since last Tuesday. And my friend and I went to a place where it's all takeout beer, like it's all fridges. And you go in and you can get like a loose can or you can get like a six pack and it's all loose like that. And they had some picnic tables. So that felt cool to me. That felt like okay. And we brought hand sanitizer and we wore masks and everything's takeout. And I paid, well, I paid with cash, but um, they were accepting cash. And then my friend and I just ate at the picnic table outside. 
So that I felt okay with. Um, but even then, it was because there was so little interaction between us and the staff. Because once we got our bottles and stuff, we left the building and ate at picnic tables. I'm okay with that. Tattooing seems pretty intimate, but it is a very sterile and clean process. And if everybody's okay, then I'm okay with it. Personally, I don't have any tattoo plans right now. I want to save up for something big and that will probably require me literally having sponsorships because I fucking don't. So I've got a lot of questions about my dream tattoo or any tattoo plans in the future or what I'm doing with my blank arm. And with that, so I feel, so it's kind of special. I was waiting for this video because I have this like big grandiose video idea and the pandemic just made me put the whole thing on halt. And then I talked to Valonius and he was like, oh, I've always had a similar idea. And I was like, shut up. <laughs> but my friend Ryan passed away. And if you've been on my channel for a while, it, it was like, it was kind of, it rocked my whole world. So we, he was pretty beloved and I, I meet people who knew him all the time. Even when I got uh, like beers with my friend last week, even he was like, oh yeah, yeah, him. I was like, okay, cool, he's such a cool guy. So through just conversations with people and stuff like that, I found out, so my friend Ryan didn't have any tattoos, but I found out that there was a tattoo artist he wanted to get a tattoo by, and that he was going to get a tattoo by, and he out loud said, if I ever get a tattoo, it will be by you, this guy. I, I only had like a little bit of information, and I was able to track down a shop that the artist guest shopped at, guest spotted at. So I contacted someone who worked at that shop. And I was like, do you remember a guy who guest spotted at your shop in like 2015 maybe, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, yeah, and he gave me a name. And then from that, I was able to um, find the guy's Instagram. And then from that, I was able to find out what shop he works at. And, um, it was really, really cool. So my big plan is to get my passport, find this tattoo artist and get a tattoo by him. This is on my lap. <laughs> um, I mean, a lot of, a lot has to go into that. And um, obviously I can barely like handle it. So I'll have to be about it much more. I'll have to, be stronger um but yeah that those are my big tattoo plans and that's really 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 what i want to do more than anything on earth um but i'll need to get a passport i don't have one um you know always sunny in philadelphia can be extreme but sometimes it's pretty fucking true most of us do not cross that bridge we stay in philly <laughs> I want to get my passport and save up and I want to meet this tattoo artist and get tattooed by him. Being able to do this like special investigation has really given me such an appetite for tattooing and like the way I get tattooed for the longest time has just been like I really appreciate this artist's work and I would like to get work from this tattoo artist and I would like it to look like this from close up and like this from far away. This this has been something completely different. Um, I don't have any memorial tattoos. And I have conflicting opinions about memorial tattoos because if you couldn't tell, I'm a pretty sensitive person. So I just wonder if I can handle it. But this has been a decision I made and that's really what I want to do. Um, that's, I, that's what I have passion for right now. So those are my future tattoo plans, but it will require some planning, of course. I think when people pass away, we want to, you know, maybe copy one of their tattoos, get it exactly, or get a tattoo that memorializes a person. And when Ryan passed away, one of our friends 
outfitted their van and came to the memorial and offered memorial tattoos. And I think the money went to Ryan's parents for the cremation and stuff. A lot of my friends did get memorial tattoos for Ryan. Um, and I thought that was really special, but I, 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 I wasn't, I couldn't do it. I wasn't ready. I really enjoyed it. I thought that that was so beautiful that our friend offered that. Um, this seems like the right thing because the, the artist is really cool. And the fact that Rai was like, yo, if I ever get a tattoo, it'll be from you. Um, that's what I, that's what I want. So those are my plans. Hopefully saying them out loud hasn't ruined them. <laughs> Sorry, I had to cry. How do you feel about getting multiple tattoos of the same imagery? Do you feel like it's a waste of space? Are you like, I like X enough to have six of them? So I think it's kind of funny. Um, I've, I've felt this way, but I am a little self-depreciating, so I may feel this way with love. I have a ton of rose tattoos and I have a ton of heart tattoos. But when I went into becoming a tattoo person, I did it for self-expression, perseverance, and romance. And romance is something that is a huge guiding light for me. Like, I love the most, and generally other things come second. So I think if you can at least understand yourself that abstractly, a couple things supplement that general theme, then I think it's okay. Even, even on this arm, that is a rose, that is a rose, that is a rose. <laughs> um... But I think from far away or even up close, I think it's cohesive because flowers, roses, tuxedo mask, love, Poconos, hot tub, I think that they all make sense together. And even I have a ton of Joanna Newsom tattoos, like uh, like a crazy amount. And I think that I like I like that. I don't know, I really like that. I think they all look okay and they all go together. So I personally, even as it's happening, like my first couple tattoos were all hearts, all heart tattoos. And as it was happening, I was like, yeah, <laughs> cool. I thought it was funny. And I also had a lot of like questions about scale. I was like, how could a bird tattoo be this big and a lady's head be this big? Does it make sense? So. I I think if it looks good, if it makes sense on you, it's okay, even if you have a ton. I have like, I have so many rose tattoos and so many heart tattoos and it's fine. Also skulls. I have a lot of skull tattoos and I'm not even that bitch. Like I'm not even like skulls, bleh. It just kind of happened. If it looks good, if you feel good, it's fine. If it's not hurting anybody. If you have a couple tattoo artists that are very selective and limited booking that you want to reach out to with a design idea, can you reach out to multiple or wait to be potentially rejected by one before going to the next? What is the proper protocol for that? So I guess I would have to understand why they are limited or selective. If they are tattoo celebrities and it's hard to get an appointment with them or they only open their books a little bit each year or if they're limited because of coronavirus, I guess I would have to know why they are limited because if they are limited because they're like always, always booked and you sent them a design as just like a, like a trial, like I just want to see if you can do this thing for me, but I might not 100% go with you. I think that in the industry, tattoo artists don't like that behavior. I understand why, because it's art that you're getting permanent, but I guess I would want, if it was me, I would just narrow, like Mike Adams, for example, I'm pretty sure works in a private studio only a couple times a month. So that may have changed, but I know if you wanted to get an appointment with them, it might, you know, it might take until like next year just because their availability is super limited. But I think if you also contacted them and you were like, I want this specific design, can you design it for it for me? And then I'll decide if I want it. 
I think that they would just say no because there's so many people who know that they want to be tattooed by them that they would just say no to that. But that's also what you get when you're working with somebody who does have such limited space and high demand. The people in line before you already know that they want that tattoo. So if it was me and I had like five tattoo artists that are really high demand and hard to get tattooed by, I would narrow it down to one. Because if your taste for tattoo artists are these really hard to get tattooed by, really limited availability people, you're gonna get a good tattoo. If that's your taste for tattoos, then you want a really good tattoo. I would personally just narrow it down. I think a lot of tattoo artists won't do that for you. They won't make a sketch for you first and then allow you to decide. Even if you offer them money, I just don't think they would do it. And it is because the next person in line behind you doesn't have that, that specific preference. You know what I mean? Um, but maybe I don't understand the question. If the question is, I want to get tattooed by five really elite tattoo artists and I can't pick which one, really you just have to sit down and pick which one. If you want to use someone's tattoo as a reference slash inspiration, is it best to ask the person or the tattoo artist first? I think being a person online who is public about their tattoos, I don't like being a part of the process. Uh, I just think that a really good tattoo artist can take that imagery for you and turn it into a brand new tattoo. And I don't have that skill set. I'm not a tattoo artist, so I don't think that I should be a part of the process. Um, and that's just me saying me. So if you found any tattoo online, if you just saw one of Halsey's tattoos, I think you could take it to a tattoo artist and they could change it and modify it or listen to you and take what you like about the tattoo and turn it into something that's just for you. Um, consultation is a brilliant part of any hand-to-hand -hand experience. And even last weekend, my friend Sev came over to get a haircut and our consultation was like a half hour long. But I think she left with something she really, really liked because she showed me a picture of a haircut and I couldn't give her that exact haircut. But we talked about what she liked about that haircut. Like, do you want to show ear or no ear? Do you want to show neck? Do you want volume? Like, what do you want? Do you want this? Well, I, you only have this. Can I give you that? And then after a really good consultation, she got a haircut she really, really liked. So I think that is like Sev didn't contact the girl and say can I get your haircut but we used it as like a jumping off point and I think that that's best because I can look at a haircut because I know how to cut hair and give you that thing that you want so I think a tattoo artist is much more qualified than um the person you might ask who's just wearing the tattoo that's just my experience um and that's what I think would work best for all three people because then you're not copying, for example, my tattoo. Then the tattoo artist gets to, you know, work their artistry and give you something custom. And then they can photograph it and put it on their Instagram as well because it's not copying, it's custom, it's just inspired. And you get your own tattoo and, you know, you still went there with references and you still had an idea of what you wanted, but you went out and got something completely new. I don't necessarily think you have to ask the original person, as long as it's different enough. In connection with your video on Tattoo Reality TV shows, what's your view on bringing specific personal experiences slash memories to an artist when getting a tattoo? Do you feel like it would be too much to share your motivations with the artist, especially if they're a stranger? So there's this tattoo artist, Tamara Santa Benez, and you should all follow her on Instagram. She's amazing. but. When she's not tattooing, she does a lot of work with tattooing culture and emotional labor. And the emotional labor that tattoo artists take on when they do their craft, especially when they are tattooing vulnerable people. Tattoo artists play the role as, you know, a caregiver, a, a voice to listen to, therapy, you know, if you get tattoos for those reasons. And the tattoo artist 
has to understand and know what to do with this emotional labor. And if you've ever had a conversation in, you know, with your friends or in different spaces about emotional labor, I think it can come in a lot of, a lot of different forms, but essentially emotional labor can have a lot of different meanings. And I think sometimes people want to stick by the dictionary definition but in my experience, I think emotional labor is the weight that you carry in order to take somebody's feelings or their emotions, really, their ups and their downs, and how you take that on and almost like you take it and what you give back, if it's positivity, if it's advice, that's the emotional labor. You take in someone else's feelings and what you put back in a caregiving situation in a nice, respectful, careful way that, you know, helps another person or nurtures another person. I believe that that is the emotional labor I'm often talking about in relationships with partner, parents, siblings, friends. And I think that you can get that as well in tattooing. I think your tattoo artist can take on the emotional labor if you are telling somebody this really difficult story. People like Tamara are pioneering for tattoo artists to be more understanding of the trauma that your, your client could potentially have had while sitting in your chair. And because tattooing can be a way to heal for people, some tattoo artists want to better understand what they can do for their client in helping with their trauma and understanding it. But with that, there are tattoo artists who, like Tamara, she has published work, she's amazing. She has Zoom meetings with other tattoo artists every single week and stories on her Instagram. I think that what she's doing is incredible, but they are pioneering this very sensitive thing and putting in a ton, a ton of work, but it doesn't necessarily mean that other tattoo artists are qualified to take on emotional labor, are capable, and that can be tough. So just from, you know, watching Miami Inc. or even I shared the example where the woman wanted a tattoo from Kat Von D to memorialize her daughter's suicide. If that was me sitting there, I have a really hard time talking about stuff like that. And although I may be qualified in the form of experience, it doesn't mean that I'm able to cope. And I'm somebody who, even though trigger warning became like a meme, I'm also somebody in my personal life who it really depends on who I'm talking to that I can have a conversation like that. And in the question you mentioned coming from a stranger and that is what is kind of tough. I think it really depends if you're getting a memorial tattoo, if you're getting, um, you know, a lot of the tattoos from Still Not Asking For It event. I did a video where I went to the Still Not Asking For It event, which is a big fundraiser that helps with local support for victims of sexual abuse and things of that nature. And every year it's this big fundraiser that helps these local entities. I went there to film and generally the vibe was a lot about taking back your body, feminism, things like that. And the mood you would think might be somber because the event is, you know, about survivors and sexual assault. And the mood was kind of fun and everybody was taking back their body and owning it. And because of that, I felt empowered. So it really depends, I guess. But I think it is up to you as the person to understand what things might be sensitive because I continue to go through my life and a lot of people who haven't experienced death or suicide, they don't know that they are being hurtful to me when they openly have these conversations and I have to advocate for myself. So with that, I think that if you think that you're getting a tattoo about a really heavy subject and your tattoo artist might not be qualified to do trauma management or take on your emotional labor, I think it's mature of you to consider that. There are definitely talks in tattoo community about understanding your client's trauma, but 
from what I've seen, it is from a tattoo artist who is dedicating a ton of their time into making space for this. I do think that it's new. Somebody recognized it and is trying to pioneer for it and I think that that is something to be interested in. So I'm going to end the video with this question that I thought was pretty cool. I noticed that you were showing off your tattoos more on social and in videos. I love that. Any reason behind it or just because it's summer and your, your style is always evolving? I'm aware this could be a touchy subject, so it's okay if you don't want to go into it. Love you, uh, Julia. So it's pretty interesting that you noticed because it has been something kind of conscious and I was wearing a tube top earlier, but it looked kind of weird on camera. Um, but my, ch my style is evolving, but I'm also feeling a lot more comfortable in my body. And it's funny, it was really subconscious. Um, I generally cover up my tattoos. I like to live this dual life where I can cover my tattoos if I want to. And for me, that's just how I feel comfortable. It's not anything about like regret. My, my mother is convinced that, oh, I wear these cardigans because I regret. But I like the idea of having something that belongs to me and I can turn that on and off. And when you put it out in the public, as a female body, sometimes I feel like what I put on display, everyone thinks that they can have a piece of. I don't agree with it, but sometimes I feel like that's a little bit of the, the mood. And being able to cover up is my way to control that, because obviously I can't control uh, society. <laughs> Last month I posted a video about my style evolution and I came to the understanding that I started covering up for the most part after um, an experience where a man reached out my skirt in the supermarket. After that I stopped wearing um, mini skirts and showing off and stuff like that and for a while I was really 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 just like closed off about it. And it wasn't until that video when I was talking to my friend that it finally clicked. I changed the way that I dressed because I had experienced trauma and I never knew that. So wow, does therapy work? So ever since that kind of came to light, I've been much more interested in wearing a little bit of midriff. Um, I'm kind of like taking control of like uh, saying that I have like fat legs and that's kind of been like something I've just started to like own and it's really effective. <laughs> so I've kind of been like owning my body a little bit more than I ever have. And it is just from like growth and understanding why I was closed off and why I was covering up my body. Obviously being in quarantine, it's kind of like a little trial run because I have worn like a little midriff shirt to like the mailbox <laughs> and like around my house. But other than that, I've been feeling pretty empowered. I did this uh, social distance photo shoot um, recently with my friend and I did wear a little midriff and I did kind of show some fat legs and I really really liked it and I'm very surprised. I wanted to caption it like wow I can't believe I have like nice tattoos like I never see them and uh, I was a little hesitant I didn't want anyone to say ah fart noise but in that like i'm surprised that people have noticed because i thought it was a little bit of a personal evolution but i i have been feeling really good about it like i have been pretty excited who's this i get up for two seconds and there's a little wee in my chair wee wee come here Okay, everybody, thank you guys so much for submitting questions. There was a ton of questions, so if you want me to do another video where I answer these questions, please let me know in the comments and I will totally do it. I had a ton of fun just talking to you guys and I felt pretty rusty. Like, my camera battery, my camera memory card is full because I just, like, some words I couldn't remember. I really have been just having a hard time not talking to people out loud in a while. I definitely am scared at how rusty I was. That's scary. <laughs> anyway, I love you guys so, so, so much. Definitely let me know how you feel in the comments down below. We can disagree. It can be a conversation. I miss, I miss that because, you know, real conversation 
is fluid. Give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new, definitely subscribe. And you can check out my Instagram if you'd like to see more pictures of me and my tattoos. I don't know, my midriff? What? Anyway, I love you guys so, so much. Until next time, bye. Bye, honey.